our body strong, not just bread, but all kinds of food. But there's something else that we need. You see, God didn't just give us a body. He gave us a spirit. And he wants our spirit to grow so that we can believe in him and we can believe in his son because his son's name is Jesus. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He provides spiritual bread for us so our spirit can grow and we can grow in him so that we can believe everything that he did for us is real and true for he's our savior but sometimes we make mistakes don't we we sin but Jesus said I am the living bread from heaven and I'm going to give my life for you he died on the cross for us and then he rose again and then he claimed us and he said, you will always be mine. Isn't that great? So we have food from God for our bodies, but also food from God for our soul. That we hear, every time we hear God's word, he helps feed us spiritually. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for caring for us so much that you became our bread that we really need. Bread for our spirit that we can believe in you and know that you will be with us always. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread that I will give him, the bread that I give for the life of the world, is my flesh. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to ask you a question this morning. How many of you own a dog? Okay. How many of you own a cat? A few people. How many of you own both? Okay. My oldest daughter and her family own both a dog and a cat. And I know when we come to visit them, you can certainly see a difference between a dog and a cat. Well, I heard a little story once about a man who owned both a dog and a cat. And one day as he was walking to feed his dog, the dog looked up to him and thought, this man gives me food. This man gives me water. This man gives me a warm place to sleep. He must be a god. Then the same man walked over to his cat. And the cat thought, this man brings me food. <laughs> this man brings me water. This man provides for me a warm place to sleep. I must be a god. <laughs> Differences in perspective. When we talk about animals, they can be humorous. But what happens when there are different perspectives about who Jesus is? We find today in our gospel reading that very issue comes up and we learn that how we see Jesus has eternal consequences. It's all a matter of perspective. Perspective, really, sometimes some people call it a worldview. It's the lens through which we see reality, through which we see what's happening in our world around us. Certainly, if we look at our own country right now, issues like immigration, political parties or leaders, law enforcement, we can find two people with radically different perspectives. Now think of Jesus. 
in our gospel today, it's a continuation of a discussion that began the day after Jesus fed 5,000 men. And the Jews keep asking questions, and Jesus tries to teach them. But think of the crowd's perspective on Jesus. They saw him as a continuation of the line of prophets, really bread prophets, Elisha, Elijah, and especially Moses, who provided bread for the people. And they saw him that way. They wanted something more from Jesus. They wanted something from him that would make them comfortable in this life. That's why they chased after him and looked so hard to find him. Some in that crowd had been there the day before, but that had only had happened once. They wanted it to happen every day. They wanted someone who could make them feel comfortable. They really wanted a teddy bear Jesus. Now, you don't have to admit that you know this, but a long, long, long time ago, there was a TV show called To Tell the Truth. And in this TV show, for those of you that remember it, there were three guest panels. And then there'd be three people, all claiming to be the same person. The first one would get up and say, I am John Doe, and so would the second and the third. Then the panelists would ask them questions and finally be asked to make a decision which one was the real John Doe. And finally then the host would say, will the real John Doe please stand up? And sometimes they'd be surprised, sometimes they'd get it right. Well, a Lutheran pastor, Matthew Richard, has written a very interesting book. It's called, Will the Real Jesus Please Stand Up? You see, he identifies 12 false perspectives on Jesus. 12 false Christs, tailor-made to what people want, not to what people really need. This crowd was interested in a Jesus who would make them comfortable, who was squeezable, who would fit them and their needs. And that's what they want. But our Lord Jesus today offers a different perspective, a different perspective to them, and certainly a different perspective to us. There's one verse from last week that really outlines the whole discussion. The people say at one point, he gave us bread from heaven to eat. Now they were talking about Moses, but that's a wonderful little outline for the three sections of the gospel. Last week, the focus was on he gave us. Well, this week it's on bread from heaven. You see, Jesus changes the comparison. He doesn't want to focus on Moses, the giver. He wants to focus on bread, the gift from heaven. And he can talk about himself. So he creates a metaphor that changes everything. He says, I am the bread of life. Now, obviously, the people knew you couldn't take it literally. He wasn't saying for the mixture of flour and water. He was asking them to see him in a new way. For Jesus is the true bread from heaven. Jesus is the true bread from heaven that provides a life that's not merely physical and doomed to perish, which was all they were really interested in. You see, when Jesus spoke to them that day, the real Jesus did stand up. The very Son of God who could offer them and offer us eternal life. And here's the problem. It takes faith to have this perspective of Jesus. To see Jesus as more than a man, more than a prophet, but the very Son of God in the flesh. 
the Jews who heard him that day couldn't see Jesus that way. They began to grumble. Hey, wait a minute. We know his folks. How can he say he has come down from heaven? And Jesus had to correct them. But they were, in a way, they were right. You see, they had drawn a conclusion based on what they knew and believed. <laughs> Remember what Martin Luther said about the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus or come to him. And that was the situation they were in. But Jesus corrects them. No one can come to me. No one come, can come to the Father unless the Father draws him. And that takes means. And the means, the word of God and the sacraments. Jesus quotes scripture and says, the prophets taught them. And so they believed. And Paul spells it out even further. How can they believe unless they have heard, heard the word of faith? The holy scriptures which God lays before us in so many different ways. And that's why it's important to stay fed on that word. That provides a feeding for your soul that enables you to continue to see Jesus for who he is. Believing in Jesus is not your work. Believing in Jesus is always God's work, and he's more than happy to do that. For he wants all men to be saved, to come to a knowledge of the truth. And all the benefits that Jesus lays out for those who see him as he is. We already have the gift of eternal life. It's yours right now, seeing Jesus as your Savior. He promises that to you. In your baptism, you are joined to Jesus, and he promises that no one or nothing can snatch you out of his hand. You belong to him. He has called you by your name. You belong to him. And on the last day, Jesus promises, I will raise you up. I will raise up your body. Doesn't matter if you were cremated or buried. And that body will rise again, completely restored, fully glorified, no longer having any of the effects of living in a fallen world in sin placed on that body. You will be glorious as he takes you to heaven bodily to be with him for eternity. How do we know? We have his word on it. 25 times in John's gospel, he will have some form of truly, truly, I say to you. Jesus always speaks the truth because Jesus always is the truth. I am the way and the truth. Paul says, Jesus is God's yes to all of his promises. How do we know? Because we have Jesus' actions on it. He starts this section, I am the bread of life, with that metaphor. He ends this section, I am the living bread from heaven. But then he adds something. And the bread that I give for the world is my flesh. You see, Jesus speaks these words already in the shadow of the cross. Everything that he gives to us is free gift, but it comes at the greatest cost for himself. He who spoke about bread not perishing was willing himself to perish on that cross to 
suffer and die to pay the price for all of our sins, for all of our grumbling and complaining about things that may go wrong in our life. We take it all to the cross and there find forgiveness and peace and nourishment as we again come to his altar to experience the very body and blood of Jesus. We find peace and strengthening and feeding for that spirit of ours. And of course, three days after his death on that cross, he rose again to life, his glorious resurrection, which is the cause and the guarantee that on the last day, your body too will rise and join with your spirit in the great heavenly throng that John was later privileged to see when he wrote Revelation. When I was a pastor here, one of the jobs I inherited was to do the signs for the signboard out in front. I really enjoyed doing it. And by the way, a lot of people read those signs. I used to find that out when I sat in Bogie's Bakery. <laughs> Talk to me about the latest sign. It wasn't so much fun in January and February. But, <laughs> but I came across a church sign recently that I really like. It says simply, without the bread of life, we are toast. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. In fact, the only change I'd make is bird toast. <laughs> but grace by our Lord and Heavenly Father to see Jesus for who he truly is in the feeding of word and sacrament. We see Jesus as our Savior, our only hope as we feed on him and as we offer him to others who right now, people that we may know who are spiritually starving, to see him as their savior as well. Make no mistake, Jesus is the true bread of life. And that's the only perspective that matters. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds focused in faith on Jesus, our bread of life. Amen. <laughs> Sorry.